Of course, Israel. The state of Israel already has or has been given by the United States thanks to people like Jonathan Pollard, the nuclear know-how. The state of Israel has enough nuclear weapons, enough thermonuclear weapons to lay claim to be a superpower already. But in order to be recognized as a ruling power in the world, Israel will have to give a spectacular display, a spectacular display, a dazzling display of its military might, which is not, it has never done so far. All that the world has seen is glimpses of what Israel is capable of doing. But it will have to be a spectacular display of its military power. When it does so, it will have to emerge out of that military uh, event. It will have to emerge as the dominant power in that region. So that all the states in the region in which Israel is located must all submit to Israel. Secondly, when Britain was the ruling power, London was the financial capital of the world. When the United States became the ruling power, Washington was the financial capital of the world, ably assisted by New York. And so if Israel is to become the ruling power in the world, something dramatic has to happen in the monetary system around the world in the financial system around the world. Something dramatic has to happen. In consequence of which, the financial capital of the world will now shift to Jerusalem or to the Jews. What is it that can happen? Oh, I love the Indonesians. Because they could understand so quickly, so easily. I don't know, maybe because they eat a lot of nasi rice. <laughs> the answer is the international monetary system is based on fraud, paper money. If I get a chance, I can teach you the subject, but tonight is not the night. But it is fraudulent. The entire world of money is connected to one currency, the U.S. dollar. The Indonesian rupiah can fall and it will cause ripple effect on neighboring countries and so on, but it won't bring down the world. The Turkish lira could be ready for Salakul Janaza, which is almost what is happening now. <laughs> Turkish, Turkish lira. But it would not bring down the world of paper money. But if the US dollar collapses, then it will bring down the entire system. Can the U.S. dollar collapse? Yes. Is it vulnerable? This is my subject. International monetary economics. This is my subject. The answer is yes, but I don't have the time to give you the details. I don't have the time tonight. Something is going to happen which will bring the U.S. dollar crashing down. You don't believe me. If you don't believe me, when it happens, then you will have to believe me. <laughs> yes, you will have to believe me on that day. But then you would look like a donkey. Yes, all those who have stayed 
confident that there is integrity in this monetary system. And this money is strong, it will never fall. And Imran is just talking nonsense. On that day, they will look like donkeys when the whole system crashes. Our Prophet has prophesied it. It's there in the Hadith. He said the day will come when nothing will be of value, meaning as money, except a dinar and a dirham. And a dinar is not made of paper. <laughs> a dinar is made of gold. The dirham is made of silver. The, the sunnah, the sunnah of Muhammad is dinar and dirham. The sunnah of all the prophets of Allah, the sunnah is dinar and dirham, gold and silver coins. We have abandoned the sunnah. We have abandoned Muhammad and we paying the price for it. The international financial system around the world today is in the control of Jewish bankers and Jewish financiers. If they want to, they can bring the U.S. dollar down today. They can do it. Because Washington has printed too much paper. And there are far more U.S. dollars outside of the United States than there are in the United States. It's entirely fraudulent. If I were to do it, they'd put me in jail. <laughs> and so two things will have to happen. The financial system will have to collapse and after that the Jews will control the finances of the world. And number two, there will have to be this spectacular display of military power. But when that military attack takes place, Israel will have to be able to argue we were provoked. We are only trying to defend ourselves. So in order to do this, you have to begin the process with Ariel Sharon going into Masjid Al-Aqsa with 1,000 Israeli soldiers in a deliberate act of provocation. He knows what the Palestinians are going to do when he does this. A deliberate act of provocation intended to bring that intifada back to life. And when it comes to life and the killing starts, Israel will have to talk peace on this side, but continue doing pinpoint killings. Huh? Every time they kill, every time they assassinate, it is intended to further inflame the passions of the Palestinian people. Bring that state of rage. And as the oppression continues to increase, there is going to be an awakening amongst the Arab masses. Egyptian people are going to be very angry. Jordanian people are going to be very angry. So what is the king of Jordan going to do? What is Mubarak going to do? What is the Saudi government going to do? In order to survive, when your people are becoming more and more angry, you're going to have to start making some powerful statements. You see? Like, king, like Abdullah just did last week from Saudi Arabia. And Mubarak will now have to speak very hostile against Israel. And perhaps one day even King Abdullah of Jordan will have to start to do the same thing. So as these statements now come out, and maybe you have an Arab summit conference and so, and the impression is created that the Arabs are closing in now on Israel, the stage is set. You've done your PR work perfectly. And now Israel can launch that spectacular military attack. The Israeli people are calling on the government, come on, come on, what are you waiting on? Let's wage war. In the Israeli cabinet they're calling for it. Hmm? And the government is 
giving the impression to the world that we are restraining ourselves. We are restraining ourselves. How long will it be before that takes place? I don't think long. That's